and gentlemen, welcome to my shop. My name's Keith and I'm your host. This is going to be the clapper part four. All right, we've got our piece in the vise here and we're getting ready to put this hole in and put a starter hole here and then we'll bring over our rotary table. I'm not sure which one I'm going to grab yet. Probably the big one because it's already kind of out here in the middle uh, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to mill this slot right here and this surface right in here. We still have material in here that will have to be brought to finish. But it's time we go ahead and establish these two points. One is the pivot and one is the lockdown for the angle that you tilt your clapper head. All right, And the clapper will mount in here like this and the post comes out from behind that. All right, so anyway, let's, uh, let's get onto our hole. We ran a starter down through there, and now we're just coming in with a uh, 23 30 seconds. Now this hole is a 5 8 tapped hole where it mounts to the machine, but it needs a diameter that it can swivel on or pivot on. And we're going to choose to do mine on my little mill is half inch and then this is five eighths and this is five bolted with a five eighths bolt so we're going to make it a three quarter so that's why i'm just coming in barely under three quarters so we can have a nice finished ringed hole and that's what we're going to shoot for all right we decided to jump back on larry's job because you know we're going to be we're going to be uh eventually moving from this location and so i'm trying to get all my outside jobs and the jobs that have been lingering on around here I need to get them done so that uh, when I move from here I got a clean slate as far as all my in and out work going so kind of the uh, attitude I got going on right now I'm gonna need to get this done and get it on its way so Larry can finally enjoy it and get his machine running and I'm sure he'd be glad Okay. Go ahead and remove this bit. Okay, I don't have a three quarter chucking reamer, but I do have this old, old hand reamer here. And I put a drill center or tap follower in there. And we're just going to go ahead and hand ream this hole here. Okay, we've gone down through there and we'll remove the reamer. We may go, this This is old, old reamer, so this this is probably somewhat dull in this area here. And we'll bring it, we'll bring it probably in and ream it all the way through there. But uh, we have the vice uh, bottom here that we're contending with right now. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move it up to this location, which is marked out by Larry here at five and a quarter inches from center to center. Just a starter drill here. We know we're going to need clearance for our uh, drill bit. We're going to put a, uh, let's see here. It's going to be a 5 8 hole here 
but I think uh, I think we'll put in a 19 30 seconds now so that when we set up uh, come in with our 5 8 end mill uh, we'll we'll be coming into new material on the inside and outside of the the radius there meaning this lower section here and this upper section here we know that we're gonna have clearance so we're gonna go in there we just we just don't want to have a, a hole that has a little scallop in it okay uh, 23 30 no we're doing a uh, 19 30 second pull away right here we're gonna slow it down just a little bit just uh, it, it could probably take it but the uh, abrasion factor when you're going a little fast on uh, cast iron or duct iron material Okay. Okay, we're going to switch over to the rotary table. All right, we've taken our stair at button head and set it up with our finger here and reach in the bore and we've dialed that bore in to zero. Now we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> change out. We're going to put our actual part up there and we're going to we're going to establish that hole zero with the spindle and then we're going to toe clamp this down then we'll be able to come out here mill this radius in here um, I'm gonna have to find my other parts I moved them around because we had ongoing work here yesterday um, and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna relieve the center of this for the hold down or the pivot bolt all right we got a piece of three-quarter uh, ink canal here it just happens to be a pin that was in our collection there and uh, we got it we got it moved in here so that we can get that center. Now we can pivot this around so we can line up with a couple of our hold down um, bolts that might come into play here. And I kind of like that because if we have to, we're gonna put another one over here and we can tag on e either side of, of this end here because we're gonna be milling out here as well. But we'll go ahead and hold it down. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna do the relief. This, this pivot right here is a flanged screw and it basically is allowing you to pivot there so we're going to come in and put that recess in it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to turn the screw to go into this afterwards so we can make this diameter whatever we end up with it there we will shoot for some kind of a diameter meaning a nominal and if we make it we make it all right you ever have a couple blocks that you've surface ground a long time ago they all match they actually are stamped well i have one the, the i have three other ones uh, they're in the same place somewhere <laughs> just had to laugh because so many times you you got them they might even be in a setup somewhere or in a box or in a jig or whatever the last time i might have been using them all right so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put hold down bolt here and one on the other side we're toe clamped down and we're lined up with a three quarter. We're going to change this out now. We're just going to throw in a three quarter. Soon we find a wrench here. We're going to throw in a three quarter inch uh, four flute end mill. Nothing fancy. An old one. It's not even, well, it is sharp. It's just not extremely sharp. Been around the block a few times.
Okay, now we're going to slightly come off center here so that we can come down. We're going to touch and we're going to set our, our travel dial here on our quill um, at zero so we know where that's at there. Um, our overall height here is a little over an uh, inch and an eighth, almost one and three sixteenths of an inch. So we're going we're gonna to take this and we're kind of looking at this right here is a half, uh, three eighths of an inch, and this is in almost uh, uh, three sixteenths or so. They left about a quarter out of that, so about one third. Um, I think if uh, if we came down about three eighths of an inch, we'd be doing pretty good. All right, we're gonna go back to zero here. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to slow it down just a little bit. At least one pulley here. There we go. Okay, uh, there's 200 there. That does sound a little uh, dull, don't it? Okay, we're going to put on the brake here a little bit and we're going to we're going to come out. There's about 50,000. And we're going to go ahead and make one uh, rotation around. There's about a uh, quarter inch landing on here, so that's a one inch from uh, from their five eighths diameter in the middle there. Okay, we're gonna come out again. Okay, we're gonna come out. This will be a full uh, one eight. from uh, zero point. Okay, this is <clears throat> this is as far as out far out as we're gonna go from center. Uh, quarter inch landing per side or on on the radius for this uh, keeper. We're gonna continue on around here, and then we're gonna drop it down to our finished depth that we want to uh, set it at, and we'll come out with two cuts again. Okay, there's one cut around. You can hear it relieve the cut. All right, here we go back out to zero. And now we're gonna, we're gonna crank in our depth that we wanna go now. There's 300 and I think 350 is gonna be good. We might be finishing this up. Well, let's go ahead. We'll go. We'll go the full three eighths of an inch here. There we go. 
All right, now we're gonna come out half of our landing. So we're gonna be taking uh, one eighth and then we'll come back for a finished cut for another eighth. All right. That other screw height is only about an eighth of an inch, so even after we finish this deck right here, if we get down even a couple hundred, it really doesn't matter what the thickness of that is. We have enough meat to uh, support it on the shank and on the face. All right, we're coming around. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna crank in the other eighth of an inch on the radius. Now I can see a little line there where we're not quite clearing out to that first cut there. So we're gonna probably take a couple and go around for a, just so it visually looks smooth all the way around that bore with no steps in it. Or counter bore, I should say. That's what this is. And it could be tool pressure that's holding it out as well. Once we get back to where we started, we can crank it around just a little bit more and we'll see if it picks it up without dialing any more into it. It got a little fainter, but it's still there. So we're just going to dial in uh, about three more thousands there. We're going to see if that'll take it out. Yeah, that removes it. All right, we're going to continue around.
All right, so that's going to be this diameter here and that face and this diameter here on the screw that we make to go in there. All right, let's reposition. We're going to do a little um, sharp them on here and lay out our distance. We want to do our radius uh, adjustment for this top piece here. All right. Let's get a little sharp them on here and we'll get this laid out. We're kind of just gauging this width across here and how much they left around here. Also where that edge is in relationship to the inside here. Actually, I should show you this way here. You can see this about an eighth of an inch inside this space right here. This is a half an inch, and this is like 600. So it's a little bit more than it is in the height here. Of course, we're going to be sweeping this radius here as well. All right. But what we get in here right now is um, we're just about an inch. And if we put the scale like this and we hold an inch in here, we're just slightly inside that edge right there. So we're just gonna, for right now, we're gonna lay out a one inch line here and a one inch there. Okay, I'm gonna come in here with a turbo end mill, probably half an inch because it doesn't, it, it doesn't um, create a lot of tool pressure and we can hog out that material so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll sweep that back and forth there and then we'll drop down on the outside here and we'll take off this shape right here. all right i found a nice little uh blue box there niagara cutter this is a a, a a roughing mill all right we're coming on over our five and a quarter i believe it is and when we come over five and a quarter somewhere in the center of that hole our cutter should sit and there we go okay and uh, there's zero on there okay we're going to want to run some kind of a tension here on uh, there we go Okay, so we're going to be coming over to there, and then back over to there. And we can speed this one up just a little bit here. Okay, we're going to come down uh, 200 thousands, and uh, we're going to lock her in there. Okay, we'll come over to the back side there first. Now I'm just feeding the rotary table by hand. And I'm not really pushing it, I'm kind of letting that cutter do its job. I'm going to have to find me a paintbrush here so I can brush the chips away. Okay. All 
Okay, that's pretty close to that line. I'm not going to try to get right on that line. We got quite a few more passes to go. Okay, back to the center. All right, I'm gonna take the vacuum. We gotta plug it in. All right, we're going to go down another uh, couple hundred. And we're going to work our way down in steps like that. to poke through the bottom here and I'm kind of looking underneath here and there's 50 okay I can just see it so basically I'm only taking another I'm, I got the cutter at a hundred but we're sticking out past the bottom there okay and this takes a little less pressure because it's just a little tiny web that we're cutting out of there and we have clearance under our part over our table we don't want to cut into it if you kind of noticed uh, I, I did put in these uh, parallels underneath here between doing the other hole and this slot Okay, now we're going to take that, that full depth and we're going to take a little bit off of that outside and then come towards the inside, come back the other way, come back the other way um, until we take it out to just about that 5 8 And actually, I think we just did a pilot drill on that one there. So, we're just going to take it 20, 25 thousandths. We want to go the right way. We want a, a conventional mill. We don't really want a climb mill on it. All 
Okay, we're out to there. Alright, now we're gonna feed back the other way. Twenty-five thousand. Okay, all right, we're gonna just ease on it until we get the width we want for this slot. Okay, let's come out of here. We went back and forth. All right, this is a 5 8 diameter. We got a nice, good, clean slot right there on the center line from this one here, exactly where our uh, customer uh, told us it was at, or Larry. Um, okay, let's come on to the outside here and we're going to take and we're going to radius the top of this here just so it's got a little contour shape similar to the one that we run on our machine here. Okay, I think we're all set here. We're going to come in and touch off. Okay, it's going to take us a little while to hog this down here, but uh, looking pretty good.
All right, we got down to where we're coming across the entire top with uh, a clean cut. There we go. Okay, we're gonna take a measurement before we back cut uh, across that again. I'm gonna see what we have here. And uh, we have uh, 950,000. So I think we're gonna leave it right there. Awesome. All right, I think I've completed everything that I need this rotary table up here as far as this project going. And I think we're going to call that the end of this video. And I'm going to regroup. I think we're going to grab the chunk of material for actual uh, clapper attachment there. And kind of our other stuff, we're going to plan out the next two pieces to this. And after that, we're going to be putting and massaging this inside and probably massaging this outside until we get the best fit possible for this thing to clap and um, we're going to be planning out our pivot uh, the pivot on my um, Milwaukee is done with this taper pin and we're going to kind of plan out the same kind of thing maybe a little different we don't know until the next video get her done Thank you.